Hey, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile doing a collaboration video. This collaboration comes to us uh, via its own version of a triptych, a trifecta, triple threat, whatever you want to look at, uh, including one of my fellow members of Tales from the Triptych, Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. She joined together with Dolores from DAM Vintage Jewelry and uh, for, in the UK, as well as Beth from Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. And they are doing a collaboration for Clear Glass, which I enjoy. I have in my own personal collection. I love reselling as part of my Trusty Huckster Mercantile reselling activities. And I'm excited to uh, participate in this video collaboration. The hashtag is hashtag bring back clear glass in 2022. And there will be a playlist of other individuals. The three of them, as well as myself and many others, will be going into a playlist which I have linked in the description of this video. And if we are lucky, I actually haven't heard the details on it, but what uh, Katie sometimes has done for her collaborations is wa uh, create a watch video, which will then have uh, all of the videos pulled together hanging out, watching them live with Katie, and seeing what everyone has brought to the party for their clear glass. The video that I am pulling together is showcasing one specific aspect of my clear glass collection. I, well, I don't technically have a clear glass collection. I have clear glass in some of my collections. So the one that I chose to showcase because they did specifically want these videos to highlight the display of clear glass, I am showing you my collection of uh, glass, including clear glass, flower frogs. So you've seen uh, some of these uh, off and on. I've shown some pictures of items that I've added to my collection. However, through some scheduling issues, I've yet to actually have a duo dive or a deep dive on these. I may end up doing a video on my own at some point, but this was kind of a trial run to show you a little bit of my collection and specifically highlighting the clear glass. So thank you to the three ladies, Dolores, Katie, and Beth for pulling this collaboration together, and I hope you like the video. Well, if you got a dollar, I'm just lousy down. You know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget fine. You can... Pretty much from the beginning, I knew that the collection that I was building of flower frogs was going to end up in this window ledge. It's south facing, so it gets sun all the time, so glass looks great in it. And this is how my collection without bowls, the ledge is only five inches deep, so I certainly can't put any float bowls in there. Uh, but the pieces that I've added uh, kind of fit in there, and I just kind of keep filling in the gaps as I add more to the collection. As it happens, the first flower frog I added to my collection was clear glass, and it's the seagull, uh, which is from Cambridge. I found this in an antique mall and I was super excited because I knew that these existed. I'd seen them online, but it was the first time I ever saw one in the wild and it was only 20 bucks. I could not check out fast enough. And then after I got home, I realized that that's pretty much the going price for them. They can go a little bit more, uh, but it's always good to pick them up in person because in general, flower frogs, including this one, can get fairly heavy. So the shipping uh, adds quite a bit. So it was the first piece, it was clear glass, and I pretty much built my collection around that. There are a lot of discussions about the different types of deco ladies in flower frogs. This is the bashful Charlotte. A lot of people call all of the uh, nude ladies bashful Charlottes, but bashful Charlotte is the one that is actually not wearing any clothing. She is somewhat hunched over and using both hands to cover herself. There's also a draped lady, uh, which I will actually show in a little bit, and there is uh, one called September Morn. Both draped lady and September Morn have some level of clothing or cloth uh, available to cover them. So those do fall into two separate categories, but doesn't matter. The Bashful Charlotte in clear looks great alongside the rest of the collection. The tallest piece in my collection is actually the Heron from Cambridge Glass. 
and so it takes pride of place. It doesn't get the glass, uh, the window behind it, but I kind of like the fact that it's centered in the middle and some of the smaller ones on either side, and it just makes a nice anchor for the rest of that shelf collection. I don't actually have a large collection of the flower frogs in their float bowls, simply because they take up so much space. But I do have one etagere dedicated to those, and you can see most of them are in different colors. I do like the way they look. I do like the way they look up against the burgundy wall. But I do have one clear glass flower frog in a float bowl. The flower frog and bowl were bought separately. It is This one is the Cambridge Draped Lady. As I mentioned, this one actually has clothing, uh, so it's the Draped Lady. The bowl I don't even think is Cambridge. I have not been able to uh, research or figure out who that came from, but I specifically wanted a bowl, a clear in the shelving unit, and the bowl fit the flower frog perfectly, so it got added to the collection. Admittedly, it's on the bottom shelf, I do not, uh, I still support the idea of, of clear glass. I think it still looks great there, but I do kind of like the f colored glass uh, in some of the higher shelves because I admittedly think it does look a little bit better in my collection. So I hope you enjoyed the mini tour through my flower frog collection, uh, both the shelf uh, ledge, window ledge with the individual pieces, as well as a quick glance through my etagere with the float bowls and the lone clear glass draped lady at the bottom. So that is what I have on display. And since the collaboration did specifically ask for the displayed pieces, that is where I'm going to stop uh, with the showcase of the videos. But I do want to close with a couple of additional clear glass pieces because I do like clear glass and I do feel there is a nice use for it uh, in the kitchen world. And it comes into play in the kitchen because I don't, like to hand wash anything. So I have quite a bit of clear glass that I use in the kitchen on a daily basis that I actually put in the dishwasher. Now I recognize I probably just had some people unsubscribe, but I feel that, uh, you know, I don't have particularly hard water. I, you know, the soap that I use it, I feel like I take care of it well enough. And it, you know, Vintage glass has been around for a while and it can be around for quite a while longer as long as it is well taken care of. But to use it every day, in this household, it needs to go into a dishwasher. So one of the pieces I'm going to showcase is my, in the actually the only piece I have of Manhattan. So this was made by Anchor Hawking and it is a, they reissued it uh, later. Um, they did, I think in like the 80s and 90s, they called it Park Avenue, maybe. Um, the original piece, the Manhattan, they both have the concentric circles, but one of the ways you can tell the difference is when you find the ridges on the original piece, it should make noise when you uh, scroll across them with your fingernail. The Park Avenue, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Uh, that one, they're, they're more rounded, so there's really nothing to catch your fingernail on, so you don't hear the pinging the pinging sound uh, you hear um, in the Manhattan. So this is obviously the largest uh, serving platter. It does not have the dividers. The same size exists with the different dividers and then there's glass inserts into those. This is really more the cake plate serving platter. I uh, just love the looks of it. It's a pretty massive piece. Don't use it very often, but for the regular viewers of my channel, the last time you saw this was in another Katie collaboration where uh, we celebrated her 2,000 subscribers with each of us making jello, and this became the home of my SpaghettiO jello ring. Looking familiar? So that is Manhattan. Another piece of anchor hawking that I have in my collection are these little uh, snack trays. These are not particularly rare. Uh, this particular one is from their service set collection. Uh, there's a couple different names for it, circles or tiny circles or bubbles or bubble circles. Uh, you can just see it is a series of circles. I like this design the best. It is actually a great size for making peanut butter toast. Uh, the, my little frozen dinners that I sometimes have are rectangular in shape. They fit perfectly on here. It is perfect for snacks. Now, I don't use the 
mug that came with these. There is the little recess um, that you can put the mug in, but they're so small, the little coffee mug that would have came with come with these. I don't even have it anymore. Most of the time I pick these up at Goodwill. You can usually pick them up for a buck or so. Uh, so they're super inexpensive because they're relatively common, but this is the pattern that I like the most. And it is the uh, it is an anchor hocking pattern. And this is, I say it's an indention, but actually it's, there's a molded ridge. And what I found is that the tumblers that I use, which are modern, have a tapered bottom and they actually fit right into that little section. So I would never really carry it around because it's quite a bit bigger, but it's just a perfect little piece for exactly what it was set up to be, snack set for a little snack. Um, in some cases, even a full-fledged dinner, you never know. But this also happens to be anchor hocking. I have about uh, probably maybe 10 of these and use them pretty much every day. So it is another great clear glass addition to my kitchen. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you will also know that I have a strong affinity for the Hazel Atlas crisscross pattern for kitchens. And this is my crisscross mixing bowl set. I actually purchased my first set of these during a COVID while I was locked up. I went shopping online, found it a great price for a set of the four bowls. And when they arrived, one of them was broken. And it just so happened when I was shopping one time at an antique mall, I actually found the piece that was missing and I could complete the set. So I actually had the full set of the four mixing bowls. And then I also have the refrigerator dishes. This is just one size. This is the, I guess it would be the quarter size because I have uh, several of these. I have two of the rectangular, which is basically a size of two of these put together. And then I also have the full, which is four of these. It's actually very, very large. I don't use that one very often because living alone, I don't tend to have leftovers that fill that. Uh, and it's also very heavy. And the lid, I have two of them and neither one, the lid doesn't really sit on there very well. So I, I have them and they're kind of nice to have, but this is the this is the one that gets the bulk of the use. These little, these little small pieces, it's got the crisscross design in both the lid and in the pattern. So again, the Hazel Atlas crisscross, definitely something I love having and definitely goes on the top shelf, uh, top, uh, yeah, top shelf of the uh, dishwasher pretty much at least once or twice a week, I will end up using one of these and it goes in the dishwasher to be cleaned and they come out fine. So that gives you a full wrap up. I probably have some loose ends and maybe some individual pieces of clear glass here and there. The rest of my collection, I actually do have some uh, pretty extensive salt uh, cellar collection and several of those are clear glass, but I won't go into those. Those are relatively plain. Um, but what I showed you are pieces that I do find absolutely beautiful. I have absolutely no issue uh, with the fact that any of them are clear. And in the case of the kitchen pieces, I prefer the clear because I don't have to worry about the color fading out of them and they're easy to maintain and uh, work great in my kitchen. So hope you enjoyed the video. I do encourage you again, look into the, uh, the description of this video for the playlist to find the other videos that have been posted and make sure you're subscribing to Beth, Katie, and Dolores uh, for all of their great content elsewhere on YouTube. So thanks so much for your time and thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day and That sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way